Hands. Thank you, sir, so much for joining me on this broadcast. Hey, thank you very much, Anand. Thank you. Absolutely. Take a moment and introduce yourself. Yeah. Uh, Apostle Dr. Vince Gomez. You know, I don't want to get into titles, but that's just the way it is. But you know what? I have a heart for California, I have a heart for the world. And you know what? This, you know, I thank you for letting me come to share my book. I just, you know, backseat miracles and, you know, just sharing my story. But it's not just a story, it's also helping people that God can use you to do miracles. Because so many times, Christianity becomes a spectator, a sport or a, a spectator, but it's for us to be empowered to you do miracles. So it's, it also teaches you how that, you know what, you're empowered to do miracles also. So I encourage people. Yes, I met a lot of celebrities and a lot of this everyday people. This in my travels from driving on the, the Uber platform, the, the, um, the Lyft platform, driving limousines, and just meeting people and allowing the Holy Spirit to come on board and to see great and mighty things in God's kingdom. Absolutely. What is the motivation behind writing this book? And tell me some of the encounter. And I know you have a collective of stories that you share in this book. And I truly, I want to encourage people. I brought that on the, on the screen, Backseat Miracle. You can get this on Amazon. And make sure get a hold of this uh, this book. So, air, hair over to you, Pastor Ben. Take us through uh, some of the miracles and motivation you're writing this book. Yeah, I mean, a lot of it, a lot of some of the the miracles were just, you know, I had a young lady that came in my car when I was doing lift, and uh, she writes in the book that you know I picked her up and she was going on an interview and she was so like in a paralyzed state, didn't know what to do. And if she came in my car, because every time that I would get into my car, I always put my hand in the back seat and I would pray that God would speak to people, that we would have an opportunity to be available to speak to people's life. It was like, this is my church right here. And you know what? She goes to say that, you know what? She was transformed, that I gave her a word. She started breaking down. The Holy Spirit started touching. She started crying. God started speaking to her. Now she became a CEO of a, a blockchain company. Uh, uh, I had encounters with a lot of basketball players. I was driving for the Golden State Warriors. Uh, there was one gentleman. His name was Sean Livingston. He was a backup uh, point guard for uh, Stephen Curry. And I remember he was getting his physical and he had a major knee problem and he, he was going, making sure that he would get signed because of the damage that he had to his knee. And I asked him, could I pray for you? And he allowed me to pray for him. That was three champ world championships later. And there was just so many, you know, praying for Stephen Curry, uh, praying for his family, countless other athletes that would come into my car. When I was even doing lift, I had baseball players coming in with problems. And I mean, there were so many stories of this people coming in, praying with them, having encounters. I uh, remember there was a, a, a world champion MAA fighter came in with the cast. I picked him up in San Jose and he's from Brazil. I don't know how he got there. I am end up praying for him like six years ago. He's still fighting today. He's in my book. So many countless stories. This, you know, celebrities, everyday people. Uh, we picked up the prime minister of Italy. Uh, we were on his entourage and I was, I was, I thought I was going to be driving in the entourage, but you know, God had a different plan. He said, no, you're just going to drive the, the luggage to the hotel. And I'm like, God, I, I wanted to drive in the entourage. I wanted to get the little pin that said Italy, United States, but God had a different plan. And I got to the hotel with the luggage and God says, I put you in the best place. I go, the best place, I'm here with the luggage. He goes, no, you see his suit over there, the prime minister? I want you to lay hands on his suit and command the power of God to touch him and to transform his life. Just like Acts chapter 19, 11, and 12, God wrought special miracles through the hands of Paul through handkerchiefs. People got healed, spirits came out. So wherever there's a point of contact, people can get transformed by the power of God. Come on, Pastor Vince. That's phenomenal. That's the act of a faith. That's what I'm seeing right now. 
that you laying hands on the prime minister of Italy's uh, suit and and praying for him, and that because you believe that your God can do miracle, wonderful powers, yeah, and a miracle can happen. Hearts change of hearts can happen. You know, people can take when it's going to do voodoo or black magic. Or, people can take the hair, you know. But why can't we just uh, pray uh, for the directions? Even you know, Jesus said. Uh, to a centurion, my word. As soon as he spoke in the word, and the centurion servants got healed, and that's there's a power Correct. in the name and the power of Jesus in the name of Jesus Christ. So I want to encourage people to continue share this broadcast on your Facebook timeline, invite your family, friends on this live broadcast because we have Pastor Vince and he's talking about his brand new book backseat miracle and i want to encourage people to continue to share let us know where you're watching from the name of your city town state we would love to acknowledge you thank you so much from coming on texas georgia i appreciate you we will pray for you towards the end of this broadcast if you have any prayer requests right now urgent prayer requests and you feel like hey i need this miracle right now i cannot take it um it's hurting it's a pain somewhere anywhere in, in, in the part of your body we gonna have pastor vince to pray for you and I'm telling you, better get ready. Today, mm -hmm. it's your miracle day. So here, over to you, Pastor Vince. It's amazing. Tell me about some of the miracles that you recorded in this uh, book. Tell, tell me about the story. Of, I think you were telling me about your daughter uh, was talking about, let's let's write a book, Backstreet Miracle. So. Yeah, well, recently, I mean, because the miracles don't stop a week ago, uh, a little bit over a week ago, my daughter got hit by a car with my wife and immediately, you know, she, you know, she almost died. She got hit and she got hit hard. She got a you know, fractured skull and she went into the emergency. But before that, my daughter had a, she had enough faith to say, call the pastors, come, let's pray, let's pray. And she immediately went to prayer. My wife went into prayer. We started calling everybody we knew to come into prayer and we knew we had that confidence that God was going to be with us. The people in the hospital was amazed. She was in ICU for approximately four days. On Friday, she got out of the hospital. So the miracles don't stop. You know, the Bible says in Psalm 77, 14, I am a God that performs miracles. Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 17, I am the God that restores your health. I get you out of the sickbed. So we're quoting these scriptures. We're praying for people. We're seeing miracles happen outside of the car, inside of the car. They're, you know, tremendous miracles. I mean, I've seen miracles, you know, happen right inside my car. People getting healed. Like I told about the MA fighter. He had a cast on. He came in. I talked about the NBA player. I have, you know, stories. I go to the hospitals. I see miracles. Uh, we have handkerchiefs. We, we, my, my head pastor, Dr. Sonny Lark, he's been doing handkerchiefs for years. And he gives me these handkerchiefs. I'll go to the hospital. I'll keep them in my car. Sometimes I'll give them to people that are in my car. I'll pray. I'll see things. Sometimes we don't see it happen automatically, but we believe that the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. When you send that word, God's going to do something. So you have to believe. And this is not for pastors. It's for everyday believers to go and pray for some somebody. In the book, it talks about empowering the believers, you're not a spectator no more. You're part of the body of Christ. Go lay hands on people. Go speak the word. Bring miracles to everywhere you go. It's amazing, you know, what God will do if you're available and you listen. That's the main thing is, can you hear what the Holy Spirit is saying? It's being a good listener. Absolutely. Amen. Listening and uh, circumcising your ears. And so you can hear the clearly what the spirit of the Lord is speaking. And then in that, you, you do reach out to a lot of people in the streets. And that's phenomenal. I think we got to get outside of the four walls of the church and reach the people who are outside of the four walls. And that's I'm very impressed. Pastor Vince, you go outside and pray for people, encourage them. So, yeah, share a couple of stories of that. 
Well, we, you know, we started on the streets. You know, I started preaching in San Francisco back in the 80s, just preaching at the nightclubs. And, and we we were, were, during the pandemic, we were doing ministry out in the streets. We were feeding people. We were doing things. One particular story, we were out on the streets at Fisherman's Wharf. If anybody knows San Francisco, Fisherman's Wharf is like a tour spot. And we had a lady that came in a wheelchair. And I said, let's pray for her. I have it on, I have it on video. And we gave her a handkerchief and immediately when she got the handkerchief, she says, it's burning, it's burning because my pastor died on blue, said that's the hottest fire. She goes, why is this handkerchief burning? And mind you, she's telling us in Spanish and we're translating. And as we're praying for her, we said, do you want to get out of the wheelchair? Do you want to take a, a step out of there? So she takes a step and she starts walking out of the wheelchair. It's crazy, the miracles, just preaching on the street, releasing the power of God. You know, the great thing about when you're outside of the four walls of the church, anything can happen. We limit ourselves when we're in the four walls of the church. The miracles happen outside the church. I have more miracles that happen outside the church than inside of the church. It's amazing. Come on. Praise the Lord. I love it. Yeah. And that is like what Jesus did. I mean, he went into synagogues on the streets, pray Correct. for people and people got healed. And uh, I want to ask you, Pastor Vince, how can people get a hold of the book? They can get a hold of the book on Amazon or they can go to the website that we just have. We have a www.backseatmiracles.com. That's our website. And there's an awesome song on there that uh, some brothers that we do street evangelism, there's a song called Back Seat Miracles that is on there and it's going to turn in. We're waiting right now for the for the director to set up the time this month. We're going to do a, a video and it's going to be a reenactment of people getting prayer for. But on my website, you can see the video. We have T-shirts. We have other merchandise. Just encouraging people, let you be the miracle. Not only just read the book, get edified, but we want you to be empowered to release your faith. Come on, because God has given you a measure of faith. Come on, I'm I'm just getting on. I feel like getting on fire, and I'm getting on fire right now yeah. just hearing these stories. When did you start doing the prayer? I mean, you got. Did you know that you're gonna get this job? And then you're going to start driving and pray for people. What was like a praying point? When did that happen? Well, what, what happened was, you know, I backslid for 15 years. I was in ministry and I made a wrong turn. And when I came back to God, I really dedicated myself. And it all happened in San Francisco. I was an organized crime. I was a drug dealer. I was selling drugs. And I was in the financial district in San Francisco and I heard the voice of God and he says, what are you doing? I heard this voice, not an audible voice, but I heard a verse vibrating my heart. What are you doing? And I remember I, I said, you know what? Three weeks later, I ended up in jail and, and uh, I said, you know what? I surrender to you, God. And I said, I know what I have to do. I started going back to church and then somehow I went on a missionary trip several years ago. And then when I got back, the missionary said, do you want a job doing limousine work? And this pastor got me the job and I started doing limousine. And that's when the ministry started taking off where I said, you know what? I'm just going to start praying for people in the car. And then I started, you know, adding after that, I started adding Lyft and rideshare, And I started doing the same thing. I said, you know what? If I'm here, if they're going to be in my car, I'm going to pray for them. And I just remember in the song, Back Seat Miracles, there's a, a lyric in there. You can see it on my website where it says, I go and I put my hand on the back seat and I started praying that they would hear from God. That's how it all started. And it's a simple thing. And you know what? Wherever you are, if you're a cook, if you're a waiter, if you're, you know, you work in a dry cleaners, you work in a bank, you have the opportunity to hear from God and release your faith. Absolutely. That makes perfect sense. Thank you, Jesus. I mean, you have miracle right in your own family. I'm so grateful that your daughter is doing good and praise the Lord because, brother, I mean, you got the strongest heart and and so much faith in Christ. When enemy knocks you and down, you're getting back up. 
And right now, I want to encourage. I want you to encourage few people that are watching right now that may be going through some tough time and have not received their miracle. They might be on the very end rope and maybe Amen. feeling like they're just going to give up. What would you like to say? Amen. I just want to pray for them. Is there, I see. I could see your 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 somebody here is praying for muscle disease called CMT. They need a fresh encounter of God. Is that all right? You want me to pray for them or do you want me to wait? Or how would you like? Uh, go ahead. You can, first of all, I was, I would love for you to encourage people that if they are waiting for a miracle, sure. praying for yeah. a miracle, yeah, let's do that. and then after that, we can pray. Sure. No problem. Yeah. I want to encourage you. You know what? If you're watching this, even maybe later on, because the spirit of God, there's no time. So I want to encourage you. If you need a miracle, amen. If you need a miracle in your life, I want to pray and believe because we're going to come into the power of agreement. See, when 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 one or two or three come in agreement, God's presence is there. I don't care what the miracle is. Recently, I went to the hospital about three months ago. It's in my book. And there was a gentleman that when I went to go pray for him in the hospital, his leg was black. And I couldn't even look at his leg. And you know what? I said, Lord, I just got to go by faith. I went to pray for this gentleman. And as I prayed for him, three weeks later, they sent me the testimony that, you know what? They're not cutting off his toes. They're not cutting off his leg. He's walking. So you know what? God can do the impossible. God is in the miracle working business. So I encourage you, you know what? Come on and get a miracle from God. God is no respecter of persons. Absolutely. That makes perfect sense. God is not a respecter of person. I want to ask people, if you have a prayer request right now, please send us your prayer request. We'd love to pray for you. Amen. No matter where you are, God can meet your need right there where you are. Don't worry about it that, oh, um, I've been praying. It's been a years now. I haven't gotten an answer. It doesn't matter. God can do something in a, like a quick second then you think that is going to take years to heal. You know, think about it. Like if glass scatters and and divide into or, or scatters into a million pieces, God can put together, make it brand new and only God can do it. So I want you to brother um, uh, Vince, go ahead and pray for George uh, for muscle nerve disease called CMT. So here over to you, sir. Yeah, let's pray for this. I believe his name is George Montgomery. Let me just pray. I'm going to pray right now in the name of Jesus. I pray, Father. I want to pray and put your hand in the back. If you can, put your hand in the back of your head because I like to pray for people's hippocampus. And that controls all of your DNA. We are taught under a medical doctor how to pray. And you don't have to that way, but I just believe that. You know what? That We pray that God would release power in your hippocampus any nerves that are out of whack, anything. And I pray that over your body right now, I pray that anything that's out of alignment, cells that are out of alignment, nerves that are out of alignment, muscles that need to be regenerated over your life, George. I pray that the presence of God would come upon you. I pray that God is your healer. I said by his stripes, 1 Peter 2.24, that you are healed by his stripes. And once you receive that healing, you got to know, number one, that God has healed you. And you got to thank God. You don't have to keep asking God. Once you get healed, once you receive that in your heart, that you are healed by the power of God. And if the symptoms come up, I want you to thank God. Thank God for your healing. You stand on God's word because in the book of Isaiah chapter 55, he says, my word shall not come back to me avoid, but it'll accomplish what I set it out to do. I pray right now that the spirit of God would touch you in the mighty name of Jesus and that the blood of Jesus covers you right now in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. If anybody have any prayer, uh, please feel free to uh, type right below this video. We would love to pray for you. Sheba from India said, please pray for my ministry. Amen. Let's pray for Sheba. We thank you, Father God. I thank you, Lord. We just lift up her ministry. We lift up the service in the heart. We lift up her heart before you, Father. We thank you that 
that her ministry would come into alignment as the spirit of God would speak to her. I pray, number one, that you would have a great encounter from God, that you would hear from what the spirit of God. And I pray that he would give you supernatural uh, direction so that you don't waste your time in ministry, that you know exactly what God has you to do. I pray for prosperity in your ministry. I pray for, that God would extend your tents in your ministry. I pray that you would have miracles and success in your ministry and that you don't have to doubt in your heart. You are called by God to do what you do. I pray for you right now in the name of Jesus. We release that right now over your life and over your nation in India. We thank you for that nation. We pray for revival. We pray that all principalities and powers are broken and we release the spirit of God in your ministry. Absolutely. Praise the Lord. And I'm going to put the name of uh, the link of the book right below this video in a comment section. If anybody wants to get hold of the book called Backseat Miracles by uh, pa uh, Pastor Dr. Uh, Vince Gomez, you can go just click on this link. You can go directly on the Amazon. You can get it from there. Pastor Vince, can they also get it from your website as well? Yeah, my website is, you know, we're trying to promote the website at www.backseat.miracles.com. Uh, uh, okay, backseat.miracles.com. Yeah, Perfect. excuse me, www.backseatmiracles.com. Miracles.com. Okay, perfect. That's wow, the domain was available. Hallelujah. Yeah, and you know, you can on that, you can get some of the interviews, testimonies, and you could also hear the song Backseat Miracles also. Backseat Miracle. Why name the backseat? Because it's always yeah. happened in the backseat. Well, I'm going to tell you why. There's two reasons why. When I started thinking about writing, people were encouraging me to write the book. Yeah. I started thinking about the first time I prayed for somebody at a nightclub. And I remember I was very new in the ministry. I didn't know anything about street evangelists. The guy just, we passed out these flyers. I came to a car and there was two young ladies in the car. And the girl says, I said, Jesus loves you. She said, if God loves me, can he heal my headache? I have a terrible headache. And the only thing I knew, I seen people lay hands on people. So I laid hands on her in the name of Jesus. And she fell back in the back seat of the car. Come on. And then the other one is God, as I was writing the book, God says, who is the first person to get saved in the back seat of a vehicle? vehicle and i'm like there's no cars in in the bible and he goes the book of acts chapter 8 philip the evangelist went up to the eunuch while he was was chauffeuring he was being chauffeured in a chariot and the eunuch said to philip come up and explain isaiah 53 they pulled over the chariot and he got baptized and we know today that there's a great move of god in ethiopia so somebody got saved in the book of acts in the back seat of a vehicle and that's why I called it backseat miracles. Because a lot of times people, why, what is that story? You know, but I go, that's why, because things happen in the backseat. It's biblical. The first person in the book of Acts got got their life changed in the backseat of a chariot. That is a very good analogy right there yeah. to backseat of miracle. And that's very catchy. Uh, titled Backseat Miracles, because people want to know what is happening in the backseat. You know, like often all, all kind of garbage happen in the backseat. People are smoking and oh, yeah. uh, doing it. But yours is a backseat miracle because I think it also gets attention of the non-believers too, right? Yeah, I've had driving people doing drugs in the backseat of my car, you know, and I'm telling them about Jesus. I've had driving people in the limo uh one guy trying to break the windows of the limo, and I had to say, in the name of Jesus, I need you to stop doing that. And I, there's one incident in the book. Let me share this. Sure. I'm driving a man in my car, and make a long story short, he gets very violent in my car, and he says, I want to kill you. So he tells me he wants to kill me. I started saying, in the name of Jesus, I bind that violent spirit. I command it to go. And he goes, why did you bring Jesus into it? I go, you started it. And we're on the freeway in the Bay Area. He goes, pull over the vehicle. I want to get out. And I said, well, let me pull off so I can get you off the street. No, I want to get out now. He got out of my car. I never seen him again. And it was just like, you know what? Sometimes you got to use the name of Jesus 
right there in the car, and, you know, because God's name is powerful. And we see miracles just of that in the vehicle where, you know, in, 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 in people, you know, crying and coming to Jesus inside the back street of the car. I had one lady, she's, I'm praying for her and she's crying and she's like, what, what is this? Why do I feel this way? That's the power of God touching you right now. So there's so many, there's, there's, I didn't even have enough room to put all the stories. Wow. I put in what I thought was important, you know, but we put it in there to inspire people that you can bring miracles. Maybe it's not going to be in the back seat. Maybe you might be in the, the line at the bank. Maybe, you know, you might be at a day school talking to some mother. You don't know where it's going to happen. You know, I love going to the hospitals because in the hospital waiting room or you're in, waiting in the, the emergency, you have so many opportunities to let people know about Jesus and pray for them. I'm telling you, more people will let you pray for them. All you got to do is ask. I don't care. It doesn't matter what religion or what relation with God. You say, let me pray. And people will take prayer. I'm telling you that right now. They love prayer. Absolutely. Prayer is very important. And uh, wow, that's amazing. It's, uh, you know, uh, people who are drug addicts and people who are doing bad stuff. But then... It, the person I'm like not thinking about that wanted to kill you must have been a, have a demonic influence over him. And as soon as you mentioned the name of Jesus, he got. Yeah, he goes, I got to get out of here. He wanted, he, you know, he, there was more to the story, but basically he was like, you know, I want to kill you. And I'm like, in the name of Jesus, you're not going to do that. You know what? I'm, I'm in a place where there's a lot of violence sometimes, but there's power in the name of Jesus. You know, and it's, you know, not only drug addicts, just regular people, regular everyday people that just need God. You know yes. what? People need a miracle. People, you know, they they don't care what you look like, but they care that, you know what? You took enough time to, to, to show them that I'll pray for you. Prayer is powerful. It's powerful because I've only had one occasion in my whole ministry that I could think of. And I had a major, it's in the story, I had a major... NBA player, um, I wanted to pray for him. I heard the Holy Spirit says, pray for me, pray, you know, pray for him. And I remember as we stopped the car, I go, can I pray for you? And he says, no, he got upset because his brother died and it was a whole thing. And, you know, he left the vehicle and I, I questioned the Holy Spirit. You, I know that I heard you to pray, pray for this, this gentleman. And I heard the Holy Spirit. He says, I told you to pray. If you don't want to listen, what can you do? I didn't tell you he was going to listen. So mm. sometimes, you know, you could pray. They're not going to listen. But, you know, it's not up to you. You just do what God told you to do and let him sort it out. But you know what? He had the opportunity. You know, but very few times I ever get people, no, I don't want you to pray. It's probably less than 5% that will say, no, I don't want you to pray. But you know what? If you make yourself available, people love to, to hear that God loves them. We need more people to pray. Absolutely. Absolutely. More people. So uh, we need more people so they can pray for other people. Get the uh, book on the Amazon or on, you can go, I put the uh, website right below. It's uh, www.drvincegomez.com or www.backseatmiracles.com. Yeah, so they both go into each other. They'll both. They'll yes, both they run into each other. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Uh, Vince, for 